Thank you so much for your question tonight. No, I'm not through. But if you think I'm going to sit here and be accused of lies like that. Okay, we're back without Marjorie Taylor Green. You all ran Rolf. She's yeah. gone. Yeah, why'd you do that? <laughs> She's gone. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene appeared on a local television show in Georgia called Night Talk, and it didn't go too well for her because she was asked questions that were just too tough by callers and also by the hosts. And as you're going to see, she wasn't very happy about that. So first, let's watch this video clip of a caller grilling her over her stance on abortion. Now, you're going to see that she is visibly uncomfortable and she even tries to cut off the interview, but the caller just keeps going. And it's just truly precious to watch. You, you talk about the, the uh, women's rights. Okay, you're blaming this all on the women. My body is my body. And I, want, I don't want the government telling me what I can do with my body. Ma'am, are you having children anytime soon? I'm, um, that's my question. I'm asking a legitimate question. And you're right, it's your body, but a baby inside a woman's womb is another person's body. Not your body and not my body. And that uh, abortion is murder of another human being whether that body is inside your uterus or, or not. But that is murder. I, I do not support the murder of another human being. I support life, and I will always stand up to fight for the lives of the unborn and, and life overall. Um, okay. But I don't, I don't think you're having children anytime soon. So I appreciate your interest in women's rights, but killing an unborn baby is not a woman's right, and that's not health care. Okay. If a child, if a, a, the 10-year-old child that was, that was the raped, what, what about then I think we should put the rapist, the a child man, abuser. Be punished. The child can't have anything done to her without uh, the government going after them, fining them, and all that stuff. That's not right. A child abuser and a rapist should be put to death if they are doing that to a 10-year-old child. Number one, I think that should be our focus. That is a very rare, rare, rare occasion, so that should not be the, the entire premise of the argument on abortion. Again, ma'am, I know you say it's your body, your choice, but I don't think you're having any children anytime soon. I think we need to focus on the future of America, and that's our children, because they are our, they are our future. And the unborn, they're the, our future also. So let's focus on protecting their lives and and instead of being focused on a lie that abortion is women's health care because that's not health care health care saves lives abortion kills a life thank you so much for your question tonight no i'm not through i'm okay. going to focus on the fact that you that put a giant smile on my face because it was so nice to see marjorie taylor green squirm because that's what she was doing. She couldn't actually adequately address the arguments that that caller was making. So what did she do? She just made it, made it seem as if that lady didn't have standing to address this issue. Because, well, you know, it doesn't concern you. You're obviously, based on your voice, too old to get pregnant. So, sorry, it's murder. Okay, first of all, just because that lady may be too old to get pregnant doesn't necessarily mean that this isn't an issue that concerns her. Perhaps she had an abortion because she needed to when she was younger. Perhaps she has grandchildren and children who she wants to have that right, that control over their own bodies. So who are you to tell her what she can and can't be concerned with? Marjorie Taylor Greene fear mongers about transgender issues and gender affirming care for trans youth when I don't think she's ever talked to a transgender person in her life. Nobody tells her that she doesn't have standing in that particular realm when she really shouldn't speak about that because she's not educated but still for her she could talk about anything but for this old lady sorry you shouldn't be concerned with abortion because you're not going to get pregnant anytime soon go fuck yourself marjorie taylor green now on top of that i love how she decides to kick it up a notch and just claim well it's murder abortion is murder is that so see i don't actually think that marjorie taylor green believes that abortion is murder because if that were indeed the case she would condemn her friend herschel walker who she is supporting in Georgia. Now, according to reports, he has allegedly pressured two women into having abortions. By her standards, Herschel Walker committed murder twice. At a minimum, he's an accessory to murder. Again, by her standards, not mine. So if she actually believed that abortion was tantamount to murder, she wouldn't support murderers. Would you support someone who actually committed murder? 
for public office? I know I certainly wouldn't, because if they committed murder, then I think that they're a terrible person. And even if they had good policies that I agreed with, they committed murder. So that overrides everything. So that's why I don't think she believes that abortion means murder, because Nobody who's reasonable would support a murderer. So she's lying. She's being disingenuous because she doesn't actually have good arguments as to why the government should control women's reproductive health. Now, when it comes to exceptions for rape and incest, well, she apparently doesn't support that because she said that, oh, well, we should put abusers and rapists to death. Okay, but... That doesn't solve the issue when you're still forcing their victims to carry those fetuses to term. How does that make it any better? They still are forced by the government to carry their rapist's baby to term. So do you think that putting their rapist to death is going to give them any more comfort when they have to bear their rapist child, Marjorie Taylor Greene? It's just genuinely insane. She says that abortion is murder, but yet she supports a murderer for the U.S. Senate and she just she has no logical reasons to oppose abortion. So this is why she resorts to really bombastic rhetoric. But I want to move on to the next clip because the host, Judy O'Neill, very tepidly pushed back against her, didn't necessarily push back, but asked a question about her involvement in the January 6th insurrection, specifically the text that she sent to Mark Meadows. As you're going to see, she throws a complete temper tantrum and desperately tries to change the conversation. Yeah. Uh he was talking about the January 6th thing. I ran across this today. Don't know if it's true or not. You tell me. Uh, you text Mark Meadows ahead of January 6th on December 31st, although it's not clear from the records whether Meadows responded to it. He said, I'm Judy, here. Judy, I'm going to stop you right now. I don't know if those are my text messages. I really don't. I don't because I don't have those saved in my phone and I'm not going to talk about that stuff. Here's what's really disappointing about this entire show today. People are suffering every single day from inflation. People are dying every single day from fentanyl. People are upset because five million people have invaded our country. And do you know the city of Atlanta has higher murder and crime rates than Chicago and Detroit? That is shameful. But all I'm hearing, and you want to talk about January 6th, and people want to talk about January 6th, you know what that is? That is a pathetic attack and, and, and avoiding the real issues that real Americans care about. Do you really think January 6th is more important than Antifa and BLM riots? If so, my God, why is one more important than the other? Because the riots of 2020 were horrific and caused over $2 billion in damage. And so I'm not going to go and play games over, were these your text message? Did you say this? Did you say that? I absolutely will not do, not do it, and I'll tell you why. I did nothing wrong. And I was already put on a witness stand being sued by some New York group coming down try to take my name off the ballot and that was wrong that was completely wrong and my so group? did you say my group no i said they were from new york oh. they they put me on the witness stand. you had to have seen all of that in the news i'm sure you did um but you guess what I the judge ruled in my favor because i did nothing wrong i did nothing wrong i'm the only member of congress that sat under oath on the witness stand being charged with ridiculous lies. And so, Judy, I really appreciate your show and I appreciate everything you do here, but if you think I'm gonna sit here and be accused of lies like that, and lies like some of this garbage, no, I, I won't because- it, I asked you if it was I'm not true. on trial, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I didn't say you were. How dare you be concerned about January 6th? People should care about the issues that I say are more important. Okay, people have different levels of salience for different issues, and January 6th was an attack on our democracy, and you were a co-conspirator, Marjorie Taylor Greene. So that is very important. It's not like the danger to our democracy is gone. In fact, the danger has increased because more election-denying Republicans are running for office, and a lot of them are going to win. Trump is still not disqualified. He can run for president once again, and he's currently the leading figure on the Republican side. So to dismiss this is just... Weasley, but she knows that this is actually a serious issue and she just doesn't want to talk about it because she was culpable there. Now, all of this amounted to Marjorie Taylor Greene running away from the interview and we saw a little bit of the host's response at the beginning of this video, but I just want to play the extended clip because um, they talk a little bit about this and they seem pretty shocked that she left. Okay, we're back without Marjorie Taylor Greene. You all ran off. 
She's yeah. gone. Yeah. Why'd you do that? <laughs> She's gone. So uh, we'll take your calls or comments or whatever you got to say, but uh, she left. She said she enjoyed my show, and she's through and got up and left. So she's out of here. Nothing I can do about that, okay? I love that. You skid her away. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you exert even a small amount of pressure on these loudmouth politicians. They buckle. They, t they can't take the heat, so they leave, right? Now, to be fair to Marjorie Taylor Greene, her spokesperson is claiming that she didn't leave because she didn't like the questions that were being asked or because they were too tough. She left because she was told that the interview was only going to be an hour, I'm paraphrasing, by the way, and once her hour was up, she decided to leave. Mm, I'm not buying that. That sounds like cope to me. It seems like you were very uncomfortable with the tough questions that you were being asked, and you really can't be challenged because I don't think that you are intelligent enough to sufficiently stake your claims without being bombastic. Like, you can't have a reasonable, intelligent conversation with callers. So you left. You didn't want to address the substance. You didn't want to take tough questions from the hosts. So once your hour was up, you used that as an excuse to leave. I, as someone who appear on people's shows frequently, will go over, right? We'll plan for about an hour or two, and sometimes I stay longer. But she did not stay longer because it wasn't going well for her. I think that's abundantly clear. But either way, you know, I think that this is more just for entertainment purposes, but I think that there's value in this clip because it shows why we all need to challenge these people directly, right? If you have a family member that's really loud and outspoken about the issue of abortion and they're conservative, push back just a little bit. And usually they don't know more than the talking points that they've heard from Fox News. There's no real substance there. They're vacuous, right? So you can dismantle their talking points pretty easily. Now, that's not necessarily going to change their opinions because these people are extremists and, quite frankly, I think unstable when it comes to a lot of these uh, politicians, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Herschel Walker, among others. But I think that because we can't change their mind doesn't mean that we shouldn't push back and we can change other people's minds who are maybe on the fence. So, yeah, we'll leave that there. Marjorie Taylor Greene ran away from a local, possibly public access television station because... The questions were just too tough, apparently. Again, we know what her spokesperson says, but I don't believe it. I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. 